Hey everybody, it's Mickey, and in today's video, I have some more pantry meals for you. I even have a special guest in the kitchen with me today. We're gonna to be heading out to Walmart to pick up some groceries and just doing some projects around the house. So if you are new here, I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe. I put out new videos every week about all things home. The first thing on my list this morning before I head to Walmart is to get my chicken soup started. I wanted to use up some leftover veggies and chicken I have in the fridge and the best way to do that is to make some chicken soup. I went ahead and roasted two chicken breasts in the oven, seasoned them really well with salt, pepper, Mrs. Dash garlic powder and paprika and I added some extra water to the pan to make a little extra broth. I chopped up some leftover onion, celery, and garlic, a small bag of carrots. I have some packaged vegetable broth and some leftover chicken broth, a little bit of wine, and today we are going to be using egg noodles in our soup. This is a recipe that I have shared on my channel before, and I will be sure to put a link to that video up above. And as always, I will leave the recipe in the description box down below. I start by just sauteing the onion, celery, and garlic in a little bit of olive oil and butter. Once they are softened, I kind of deglaze the pan with a little bit of wine, which is completely optional. You can leave it out entirely if you want to. Cook for a few minutes to allow the alcohol to burn off, and then go ahead and add your broths, carrots, chicken, and seasonings. Bring everything to a boil, allow it to simmer on medium for about 30 minutes, and then you can add your noodles and boil until they are cooked through. So I'm gonna be making pizza too today. I'm just gonna be making one large um, Sicilian size pie. I have some leftover tomato sauce that I took out of the freezer, which will be more than enough for one pizza. I have my food processor out because that's how I make my um, pizza dough. And for that, you're just going to need one envelope of yeast, some flour, olive oil, a cup and a fourth of warm water, two teaspoons of salt, and um, one tablespoon of sugar. I have a whole video that I'm going to link up above and down below of my whole pizza process. It's our family recipe and I will leave that link for you down below so you can see the whole process. Begin by dissolving your packet of yeast in a cup and a fourth of warm water. Just mix it up and let it sit for about five minutes until it does its thing. Put the flour and salt in the bowl of your food processor, start mixing, and as it's running, add your activated yeast and one tablespoon of olive oil. Keep everything processing until the dough forms a little ball. Turn the dough out onto a floured surface and knead it several times, shaping it into a rounded disc. This is a great simple dough recipe that you can use for breadsticks or for dinner rolls. If you would like to see a video on that, let me know in the comment section down below and I can add it to an upcoming video. Once the dough is kneaded, place it in a oiled cake pan, cover with some plastic wrap and a clean dish towel and put it in a nice warm spot to rise for about an hour or so. The chicken soup is all done, the dough is rising, so I'm gonna be taking this opportunity to run to Walmart and pick up my groceries. So we have only been going out to the grocery store probably every 10 days to two weeks. It has been really difficult in our area to get a time slot for grocery pickup just about everywhere. I was only able to get today's order from Walmart because I was online well over a week ago, just after midnight, when they released the available time slots for the coming two weeks. I snagged this spot, even though it was more than a week and a half later, but I wanted to save ourselves a trip to the grocery store and I knew that I could add to my Walmart list over the week. I have been asked if we are wearing masks and gloves whenever we go out and yes, our family wears face masks and gloves whenever we go to this grocery store or have to run anywhere. I really think it is very important that we all do what will make ourselves feel safe and comfortable and to also do what will keep our community safe. 
The other thing that we are doing is bringing our groceries in and wiping them down with Clorox wipes, removing things from cardboard boxes, and just disinfecting everything. We bring the groceries in and wipe them down on the small table that we set up here in the kitchen, and then move them over to the kitchen table and then put everything away. I know that not everyone feels that it is necessary to go through this process, but like I said before, I think that it is so important that everybody does what makes them feel more comfortable. So with that being said, this is our grocery haul for today. I guess I will start in the back here. Um, I got a couple packages of ground turkey. I got two packages of stew meat, one for beef stew and the other one for some beef stroganoff. I have a big old package of chicken breast. We have a lot of bread products too. I have two loaves of bread, some hamburger rolls and some hot dog buns. I have a couple large cans of chicken broth. We bought some pomegranate juice and orange juice, some flour tortillas for tacos, and some ricotta cheese. For some reason, we have not been able to find bananas anywhere, but I did get these beautiful strawberries and blueberries. I'm looking forward to baking some muffins and things. I have some celery and some shredded um, extra sharp cheddar cheese and mozzarella cheese. We bought some Aveeno lotion and some Dove soap. I have a big old box there of um, Ritz crackers. We bought a whole bunch of different kinds of teas. We have English breakfast. We bought some crystal light and green tea packets, you know, to mix with water to make drinks. I have a large container of honey, a couple jars of vitamin D and I bought some light bulbs and of course I had to get a few extra cans of tomato puree and tomato sauce. So that is everything that we got in our Walmart grocery pickup haul. Now this should easily last us another two weeks before we even have to think about going back to the store. So I'm gonna get this all put away so that we can finish up our pizza and my daughter Rebecca has the best Dutch apple pie recipe to share with you guys. The dough is all risen and we are going to get it in our pizza pan here, but first you need to sprinkle your pan with some cornmeal to really help the dough stick and be able to spread it out evenly. Add your dough to the pan and slowly with your fist work the dough into all four corners of the pan. Warm up your sauce in a pan and spread it all over the top of your pizza dough. And then it's ready to add your toppings. I like to put a little bit of garlic powder first, then some Romano cheese. I like both red and green chopped bell peppers, a layer or two of mozzarella and provolone cheese, and then you bake in a 450 degree oven for 15 to 20 minutes, depending on your oven, and it's ready to eat, and it's way better than takeout. Not only is this recipe really simple and delicious, but it makes your house smell so good, almost as good as Rebecca's Dutch apple pie. We good? Go. Hi, I'm Claire from the Bon Appetit Test Kitchen, and today we're making apple pie. <laughs> you're good. I asked if I could you're, do that. <laughs> you're, not, you're not Claire, who are you? Hi, I'm Rebecca. I am wonderful Mickey's daughter. And uh, as a little birthday treat to myself, my mom has allowed me to show you guys my favorite apple pie recipe. Because I don't know about you guys, but I like pie a little bit more than I like cake. So for my birthday this weekend, I asked if I could make apple pie. So this is a recipe from the Bon Appetit website. Um, it is my favorite recipe that I found. It will be linked down in the description. Um, I love making pie. I've made a lot of apple pies, and this is by far the best. So let's get started. So first we're going to be making the crust. For the crust you're going to need uh, one and a third cup flour, half a teaspoon of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, uh, just regular salt will do, one fourth a cup of butter that's cut into little cubes. You'll see when we added the ingredients and this butter should be chilled but not frozen. A fourth a cup of frozen vegetable shortening. Today we are using Crisco because we live in the south. In here, we have three tablespoons of ice water with uh, one half a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar mixed in here. Uh, until we use this later on in the recipe, you want to keep it in your fridge to keep it nice and cold. 
Alright, so we're beginning with our bowl filled with our one cup and a third of flour. And then we are going to add our salt and sugar. So with our chilled butter, now we're going to chop up one fourth a cup, which should be about half of the stick. Then we're going to do the same with our vegetable shortening, and again we're just going to need one fourth a cup. So now you're going to want to combine that butter and shortening with your flour, salt, and sugar. Um, you can have one of these really handy tools, which is just you kind of pastry blender. Oh, it's called a pastry <laughs> blender. I did not know that. <laughs> so you can take your pastry blender and mix that all together. It's going to be a little difficult because again, that shortening and butter is cold. But that will make your crust a lot flakier if it's cold, so you want to keep sure, keep that temperature consistent. So once you have that mixture into kind of a mealy or wet sand texture, just to enough where you can kind of press some of it together and it'll stay together, you're going to want to take that ice water and apple uh, cider vinegar mixture and drizzle it over this until it starts to clump together. So once you have the dough to a point where it's sticking together and holding its shape, so I have it to a point where I'm happy with it, going to take it into a ball and then flatten it out into a disc. Just with your fingers, real gentle. Put it on top of some cling film, wrap that up, and we are going to refrigerate it for 30 minutes. So now that we have our crust in the fridge, chilling for 30 minutes, we're going to move on to making our filling. So for the filling, we're going to need three and a fourth a pound of apples. Now, the recipe on Bon Appetit says just Granny Smith apples, but I personally like to mix my apples because I think the flavor um, is a lot more rich that way. So for our filling, we got Granny Smith and Fuji, and this is a Mickey secret that please don't tell her that I told you, but in all our apple pies, we add one pear uh, because I don't really know why, but it's what we do. So, and it's a secret, so don't tell my mom. Then we're going to need two thirds a cup of sugar, two <laughs> tablespoons of flour, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, or to taste, I usually add a little bit more. I'm not too precise with my measurements. I am my mother's daughter. And then two tablespoons of melted butter. I usually end up melting about three tablespoons because I like to add a little bit more or a little bit less depending on what the mixture needs. So after you let that uh, crust sit in the fridge for 30 minutes, you're going to turn her on to a lightly floured surface and roll her out evenly. Just going to very gently lift her up and put her inside. Now lay the dough in your pie plate and flute the edges all around. For the crumble topping, add one cup of all-purpose flour, half a cup of sugar, one-fourth a cup of packed brown sugar, one and a half teaspoons ground cinnamon, half a teaspoon of salt, and six teaspoons of chilled unsalted butter all together and mix. After adding your apples to the pie plate, pack the brown sugar mixture on top. Then, bake in an oven set to 400 degrees for 40 minutes, and then reduce the heat to 350 and bake for another 45. The full recipe will be in the description box below. 
So this is what Rebecca's pie looks like when it is all done. I cannot tell you how delicious <laughs> this pie is. I like to eat it with a little bit of vanilla ice cream and a drizzle of chocolate sauce. It is so, so good. Please let me know what you think if you try this recipe and leave me a comment down below. So for dinner tonight, we are having the chicken noodle soup with pizza and for dessert, of course, we are having that delicious pie. So thank you all so much for watching today. I hope that you are doing well, staying close to home. I think about you all every day and pray for your health and safety. Please don't forget to subscribe and join our community over on Facebook. I would love to have you all as a part of our YouTube family. So until I see you in that next video, I hope that you love the life that you have. Be kind to each other, stay safe, and I will see you again soon. Bye.